Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Trek Cannon. So, today, we got an interesting episode, I believe, because I think it's one of the first times that we take a look at uh, just a scene, one scene all by itself, and just talk about uh, the impact and what's going on in that scene. Let's talk about the particular episode that we're speaking of. The original series episode, Requiem for Methuselah. All right, now, Requiem for Methuselah is one of my, uh, not top 10, but not lower top 10 episodes. It's really nice. Um, actually, it has one of the first appearances of a mutant in Star Trek canon. And I wanted to let everybody know that Khan Nguyen Singh is not a mutant. Khan Nguyen Singh and all of his Superman and people like him are called augments. Augments are different than mutants. Augments, you had to do stuff to them. You know, you got to add baking soda, water, stir it. I don't know the recipe, no. But uh, augments, they were uh, genetically engineered to be the way that they are. Okay, as opposed to mutants who were born with a defect that set them apart naturally from the humans in society and in this particular episode we meet one of the first mutants okay this particular i'm not going to get into the specifics of this entire episode which is kind of unusual for me but uh because you know you guys know how i deal with spoilers but um like i said i didn't want to cover the whole episode i just wanted to cover this particular scene all right and this particular scene it was some things i wanted to break down so First, let me give you just a little bit of a, a context of how this scene is, of what's going on in this particular scene. Now, Kirk has only really loved two women as uh, in canon, all right? And that was Dr. Carol Marcus, which the first time we got to see her in, which was his wife and the mother of his son, was in Star Trek II. And... Um, this particular lady in this episode and like i said i'm not going to give away you know what's going on and anything like that but a lot of people seem to think that kirk james tiberius kirk was a ladies man and you know um off you know being a pimp of the galaxy but in actuality he wasn't and um if you actually look back at what kirk when kirk was interacting with women on that level okay it was usually in the uh effort to achieve a mission, okay? So to get some information, to get next to somebody, to, um, you know, to get, to, to use that person to get close to somebody, you know? So um, I think it was only one other instance where, you know, he was just being flirtatious, but not in a way to as, you know, I wanna do anything with you. But um, I think people get Kirk's charisma mixed up with, uh, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, him being a dog, but, you know, it's only been two women that Kirk has actually loved, you know. So in this particular episode, um, basically Kirk is heartbroken. And as you can see, he's sitting there. Look at his body language. Listen to how he's talking. Okay, look at his expressions, all right? You normally don't see Kirk like this at all, all right? Kirk has been through all kinds of things. And this right here, is what's really getting to him. All right, now, Spock is noticing this, and you gotta understand the position of first officer. First officer, if everybody if everybody remembers, according to things that Riker has said, okay, first officer is not only responsible for the lives of the ship, but for the captain as well, okay? So, let's talk about, before we continue on with this scene, let's talk about two words, assault and logic. All right, so assault basically is when you do something to somebody that's unwelcome or uh, unsolicited, or I guess they will, basically, okay? And logic is basically the train of thought that you use. Uh, well, it is the logic is the truth and facts. It's the rails of truth and facts. That your train that your uh, train of thought rides on. We'll, we'll put it that way. I think that's the best way that I can put it. Logic is the rails of truth and fact that your that your train of thought uh, 
rides on. Okay. Now, you got to understand something about Spock. Two things. One, Spock is Vulcan. All right. People seem to think that Vulcans are unemotional. No. Vulcans have more passion than humans do. They just, through uh, thousands of years of practice and genetics, okay, and, um, and uh, religion and ceremony, their culture, was able to subdue it, okay, to hold it back to a certain extent. Now, the other thing that they, people don't know about Spock, you know, may not understand about Spock, is that Spock is half human, which means he is always warring with those two sides. Uh, and when I say not, and when people hear the word warring, okay, they think of okay, warring between his logic and his um, irrational. Not really, okay. It's not really that simple. It is the warring between his Vulcan side and his human side, which are both extremely emotional. All right, it is the warring of those two sides together against his uh, against his barriers, self-made and taught as a Vulcan, okay? It is the war between those elements that Spock has always uh, tried to uh, to balance. So Spock is logical, but he uh, he's understanding what Kirk is going through. But since that's not primarily his train of thought, he's thinking about the um, condition of the ship. He's thinking about um, the lives of the ship. If the captain isn't 100%, it is jeopardizing the mission of this ship and the lives of this ship. And back then, they were on a deep space five-year mission, okay? So support was far away usually, days, okay? So you got to understand that you need the captain at tip-top shape on a five-year mission, even more so than your normal captain uh, should be. Now... This is the logic that Spock is working under. My captain is ineffective. I see my captain ineffective. My captain is distraught. So, distraught. Distraught is a very powerful word. Okay. Distraught is beyond, like, if say depression, no, if say heartbreak, we'll take heartbreak because that goes with what we're talking about today too. So, if heartbreak, if heartbreak is say, the three foot end of the pool this stroke is the ocean now, I thought I was going to say deep end no it's the ocean this stroke can make people do a lot of crazy things this stroke is a type of chemical imbalance in the brain see that's the thing guys let me let me have a side note here all right emotions Emotions isn't some type of neuron firing and, you know, now I'm, uh, I'm all upset. No. There's actual chemicals, man. It's chemicals that are leaked into your brain that actually change the functioning of your brain. Okay? In other words, you become mentally disabled when you're distraught, when you're extremely upset, when you're in love. Or when you're in the opposite of love, which isn't hate, is heartbreak. Okay? So, all of these things are going on right now in Kirk. Spock knows the importance of having the captain in tip-top shape, especially on this type of mission. Okay? So, let's talk about assault, like I had said. Now, assault is, of course, uh going into somebody's space or on them without permission, all right? Unsolicited, all right? Um, and I've just told you guys what logic was. Now, let's continue on with what's going on. Now, understand that Bones knows Spock. And a lot of people think that Bones and Spock got a weird relationship. They don't have a weird relationship. They have a complex relationship, all right? But in essence, they know each other and they respect each other, okay? So what Bones says to him is from his perspective, but Bones know exactly what Spock knows, all right? And I think when I interpret this particular scene that Bones wants Spock to do something about this. 
he knows this Spock is going to have to do something about this. And he's saying to him in so many words, I'm sorry that you can't see that something needs to be done about this. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Er, now, of course, Bones leaves the room and Kirk puts his head down. But before he puts his head down, he says this. And lonely man. And a young and lonely man. We put on a pretty poor show. Only I could forget. I wish I could just forget. Now, remember I was talking about when you have heartbreak or you have any type of emotional response to something, it's a chemical that's released in your brain. Okay. In essence, your brain makeup changes. This operation changes. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about that is this. There's absolutely nothing you can do about that until those chemicals subside. For some of us, the length that it takes for those chemicals to subside and we're not thinking straight, we tend to do things that are way out of our character. When I say out of our character, out of the normal operations that our brains would have, how, our, how we would re react to things, our response times, okay? The things that we're thinking about, the choices that we make. So that's one of the reasons, or it could be the main reason why people who are in relationships and their significant other does something um, that is emotionally troubling for them, they react in a way that's unusual for them, okay? When people break up, one of them is able to move on, the other one may not be able to, that's because of brain chemistry, okay? Now, logically, we can't have anybody operating a ship and being responsible for people's lives like this. Can we have the computer having mental issues? No, we would have to have somebody go in there and fix that. So. What does Spock decide to do? Now we're back to our original two comparisons. Assault versus logic. Now, is it okay? So that brings us to a question then. Is it okay to violate someone if you think it serves the purpose of the betterment of everybody? Okay. Which, on a side note, is one of the basic things of Star Trek. The good of the many outweighs the needs of the few or the one, okay? And the reverse, the needs of the one outweighs the needs of the many or the few. And that is the other part that a lot of people forget. And that is the other part that was discussed and came to in that particular movie, all right, Undiscovered Country. Now, let's get back to the scene. Actually, before we get back to the scene, I don't know if you guys ever seen um, Spotless Sunshine of the, um, no, something spotless, something of the spotless mind, something sunshine of the spotless mind, but it had, it starred Jim Carrey, okay? And um, I forget uh, the other actress who was in the movie, but uh, it was a great movie. The premise was awesome. The story was awesome. The acting was awesome. When I seen that movie, I had to ask myself, if I had the choice, would I forget the person who I loved, okay? Would I forget, would I choose to forget that pain? Now, since we're talking about Star Trek, let's relate pain with Trek. Now, if you guys remember, Kirk said famously, I, I, I need my pain. Pain makes us who we are, okay? Pain makes us who we are. He said this in Star Trek 5 taken away with a wave of a magic wand 
They're the things we carry with us, the things that make us who we are. If we lose them, we lose ourselves. I don't want my pain taken away. I need my pain. Adversity, pain, adversity, um, hurdles, okay? These are things humans need to develop, to evolve, to move forward, okay? To become better versions of themselves. Without adversity, we become stagnant, all right? If you stagnant, you die. So what Kirk was implying is, is that the, the things in his life that gave him pain and he lived through made him a better person in who he is, the type of Starfleet captain and at that time Admiral that he is, all right? So if I had the choice to forget, I would choose no. And since Kirk is the one who said that later in his life, I would have to believe that he would have thought the same thing if his brain was right. But because the chemistry of his brain was off, that is what he said. So Spock is faced with two particular issues. His friend, the needs of his friend, and the needs of his captain. All right? The needs of his friend, he just heard was, I wish I could forget. Spock has that within his power to do. The needs of the captain are to be 100% mentally stable. All right? So Spock is faced with both of those in his favor on his logic. All right? So without permission, he proceeds to mind mail, which is a very personal and uh, invasive action, mental action. And he erased all of the information that Kirk had about this particular situation. He erased all the heartache. And in doing so, his brain chemistry was set back and he was able to captain his ship. But then that erases, then that uh, raises two particular uh, issues then, doesn't it? If we just said pain makes you a better person, in the short run, he may have done Kirk, his friend and captain, a favor. But in the long run, did he do him a favor? Kirk was not able to grow from that adversity of that particular situation. He wasn't able to evolve. He wasn't able to add the things that he learned and the mistakes that he made from the mistakes that he made to his psyche. All right. So in the long run, I think Spock did Kirk a terrible disservice. And in doing so, did Starfleet and the Federation a terrible disservice. And if you want to think about it on a personal level, he did Kirk's next love a terrible disservice because everything he learned from that prior relationship, he can't apply anymore to make him a better person. So did we answer the question did Spock assault Captain James T. Kirk? I'm going to have to say yes. He did. Even though the intention was right, in the short term, it was it was right for the short term for the mission that they were on. It was wrong for the long term. And I'm going to have to say, even if I dig a little, not even deeper, it was wrong for the short term as well. It was wrong, period. Okay? So, Spock, he was bogus for that. He was bogus for that one, okay? And Kirk, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. But as I heard once, this too shall pass. So please leave your comments and what you thought about this particular breakdown of this scene, these particular moments that we discussed. And let me know if you think Spock assaulted Kirk or if you think that he um, did the right thing and probably why. So please uh, ring the bell if you haven't. Please subscribe if you haven't. You know, thanks for watching, and as always, peace, recycle, and where's that probe? Say the whales.